You wake up in darkness. Is this the afterlife? Well, yes, actually. Memories flood back. You were a large star spinning in a galaxy with trillions of others, controlled by the supermassive black hole leader at the center. But you'd led a full life of around 7 million years, here for a fun time, not a long time. After all, you became a big superstar. You had all the attention. One day, after being way too bloated from fusing all the elements you could possibly fuse, the end had arrived, and you were content. Your core, or your heart, was about to collapse. Yes, you're about to die, but that means going supernova. You submitted the paperwork and the process began. However, you realized this might not be pleasant. You had the worst fever of all time, temperatures skyrocketed to a hundred billion degrees Celsius, so just a little bit warmer than a finished sauna. The pressure? About 10 billion trillion pascals. Within a single human day, as your core collapses, things get wild. Your insides are moving at about a quarter of the speed of light, that's really fast. Time seems to stretch and whoop around you as if you're in the interstellar sequel or attempting to fit a family of elephants into a hatchback. Time to go supernova! Not yet. You wake up. Because your overall mass was larger than 25 times that of the sun, congratulations, you are reborn as a black hole. No, it's not good. It's a mile high club for the eternally cursed. You try to see yourself in the mirror. You can't. What have you become? 24 hours ago, you were an aging, yet powerful, star, like Keanu Reeves. But now, there's no escape, literally, and you have no visible form, literally. So basically, you're a Sauron eyeball of the universe, without the fire around it. And you're the useless version that needs orcs to do his job. You've got an appetite that could put a teenager to shame, or toddler. But there's one tiny problem. You're even smaller than the other dead stars that you made fun of your whole life, who also weren't allowed to die. Who wanted to be part of a weird star zombie afterlife mixer anyway? See, at this point, you've gone from supergiant megastar to being as threatening as a cosmic bunny. You know, if the bunny had a mass of 20 billion billion kilograms. But you're also incredibly dense, with a mass of about 10 times that of our sun, except you're squeezed into an area smaller than a city. Your gravitational pull is so strong that light cannot escape you, much like how you can't escape Disney making more Lion King movies. Fortunately, as a black hole, you can't see those. But wait, look, you notice a lonely, alive star wandering nearby. Ah, but it's starting to look pretty tasty. Why would you think another star is tasty? Are you actually a zombie? Now you begin to imagine how to eat it. Oh great, now we have intrusive thoughts. You wave at the other star, maybe he can help you. He decides to come over. Oh, that's right, he can't actually see you and just sees a background of space waving at him. Kinda weird. Who's there, he asks. It's me, Super Red Giant Giga Star. The star leans in further and suddenly its outer layers start to stretch towards you the closer it gets, forming a disk of gas and dust that swirls around you like a whirlpool. And it's so beaut- oh, you're eating it alive. Unlucky. The star's body is now in a newly formed accretion disk. It spirals inward towards you like spaghetti. It heats up, reaching temperatures of millions of degrees. It's like you're cooking your food before you eat it, except the oven is the size of a solar system. The energy released by this process is absolutely mind-boggling. You are shining 10,000 times brighter than the sun, mostly in x-rays that human eyes can't see, which is good because that really is a needy species if there ever was one. As you continue to feed on the corpse of the adventurer, the magnetic fields in your disc start to play a bigger role. That's right, you have magnetic fields. And also, everyone else can see you now. Thanks, accretion disc. And sorry to the other guy. Oh yeah, all the dust and gas from the star you just ate, you're converting 60% of that to different types of energy, making nuclear fusion look like someone burning paper to fuel their house. But that means you're only actually eating 40% of the star, which makes sense. Zombies only eat 40% of their human lunch, otherwise how else would you get more zombies? But here's the thing, you don't feel satisfied. Sure, you feel a little bigger, a little more powerful, but with that comes a growing frustration. You're ready for more, but the galaxy is not exactly lining up to feed you. That other supermassive guy in the middle has dibs on everything, and there's no Uber Eats. Here's the catch. With great power comes great hunger, and a deep desire to once more be alive when you were never hungry. Which sucks, because you literally just wanted to die as a star in the first place, and now you're here. So you're still hungry, and you're not a snake who can live off of one random deer, and there's plenty of interstellar ingredients around, which is basically the gas and dust from many dead stars. You look at it and realize they leave their wispy corpses floating in space, and from that new stars can be born. Your eyes grow bigger and realize that it's candy floss for black holes uh -oh. and space whales. 
But like a kid who's too short to ride the roller coaster, that candy floss is just out of reach. You stretch your gravitational fingers trying to grasp those tempting clouds, but no, you cannot. You're a black hole and yet you're powerless to claim it. So you sit still for another few million years. Having fun yet? Well, you could do those things for another few million years, but you sense a disturbance in the fabric of space-time. Another black hole is approaching, a rogue black hole wanderer. As this black hole gets closer, an idea forms within your event horizon. If you can't reach that delicious gas alone, maybe you need a partner. It's time for a merger, black hole style. Which is basically the same as on Earth, 50-50, and then we have a hostile takeover. The dance begins. You and your new friend start orbiting each other. You do this for a billion years, give or take, looking at each other menacingly. Then, you get closer and start to really trash talk, picking up the speed with every rotation. It's the universe's most intense game of cosmic tag. Finally, you're spinning around each other hundreds of times per second, warping space and time into a pretzel. Now all you need is that good old-fashioned German beer, except before that can happen, in a flash that outshines entire galaxies, you collide. A billion-year build-up for a few seconds climax. Who can relate? The energy released is absolutely outrageous. For a split second, you're pumping out more power than all the stars in the observable universe combined. Take that, Eurovision. Oh, and you're now one. Well, you're one. They're dead. But you have the body. And you feel different, bigger, stronger, faster, with an even fiercer appetite. Oh yeah, that interstellar gas that was just out of reach, it's now spiraling towards you due to your gravitational increase. Double the mass, double the gravity power, baby. And so you begin to form a bigger accretion disk. Swish. As you feast on your cosmic buffet, you hear something strange. Wait, is that crying? The gas around you seems to be upset about its fate, but it's just gas. Turns out it had dreams of forming thousands of new stars. It is pleading to you to stop. Instead, you've squashed those dreams like a petri dish of bacteria being squashed by the Hulk. You begin to weep as you eat what you used to be. And so you keep eating against your will. You want to stop, but you cannot. You're flying around the galaxy just looking for friends, but instead you kill everybody. You're mixing and crying with eating, eating and crying, then you eat some more. You're eating and eating and eating and eating. And One eternity later. Good gas. Tasty gas. Why? Because you are now an intermediate mass black hole. You're in a cosmic sweet spot. You're bigger than the stellar mass lightweights you used to be, but not quite as massive as the supermassive giants at the center of galaxies. You're the middle child of the black hole family, ranging from about 100 to 100,000 times the mass of our sun. Not too shabby considering you started at 10. Your influence is growing and the galaxy is starting to take notice. You're shaping the space around you, your gravity tugging at stars and gas as you walk down the galactic hallway. Hey, maybe the zombie star thing ain't so bad. You get to reclaim your celebrity while sowing fear amongst all the other stars. But speaking of which, you spot something that makes your event horizon tingle. A globular cluster. This is like a cosmic disco ball or the most expensive sardines grouped together you've ever seen in your entire life. It's packed with hundreds of thousands of stars all bound tightly by gravity. And it's heading your way. Time for a feast. Like a killer whale, one by one, the stars spiral into your mouth. Their lights flicker out as they cross your event horizon. Their mass becomes a part of you. Okay, yeah, you're right. 40% of their mass becomes a part of you, and 60% is released as light shows that allow humans and goats to see stuff that makes them go, whoa. But wait, you're not just consuming and growing, you're reshaping. Well, not you, you're a spherical rotating black ball, but the galaxy. As you move through space over a few more millions of years, the gas around you gets compressed, maybe a little bit depressed, creating ideal conditions for new stars to form. Basically, you are becoming a self-sustaining star factory. Sure, you ate a bunch of stars, but you're also helping to create new ones. That, uh, some of which you might eat, but, you know, so good of life. And now you think of The Lion King, so Disney wins that round. You're constantly hungry, and the more you eat, the more you want to eat. And it's all a bit repetitive. Any friends you do make, you eat. Every time you just want to sleep, you eat. When you dream of being a star like you used to be, you kill those that look like you, and you eat. And then of course, you are still the middle child. You're too big to hang out with the small black hole crowd, which don't like you anymore. And you're not quite big enough to join this supermassive big disc club. So, you sit around and a couple hundred million years have gone by again. Now you wonder if you've just reached your peak. And nothing's gonna stimulate you ever again. And that the galaxy just exists with you and nothing challenges you. Sadly, things are about to get worse. Whoa, 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 who's that guy on the horizon? Another galaxy? Where does he think he's going? Oh, that's not good. 
Two entire galaxies are about to smash together, and you're along for the ride. Gravitational forces toss stars and gas around like litter at a universe-sized party. Sadly, you're the glue here. The galactic centers start their own gravitational dance, dragging you into the chaos. A much bigger version of what you did earlier to the other black hole. Stars explode into violent bursts all around you. And as the speed picks up, you're also gulping down stars and matter faster than ever. Way past what should be possible, even on a 4th of July hot dog eating contest. Except, uh, this is for 2 to 3 billion years. Just when things seem at their craziest, a third massive black hole joins in. Oh, that's you. The gravitational tug of war gets so intense that you're flung out of the galaxy at ridiculous speeds in a gravitational recoil. Fast speeds, yes, technically. How it would look from Earth, very, very, very slow motion. But hey, congratulations, you are now a supermassive black hole. If you were a beagle to start with, you'd now be the size of the Earth. Relatively. You are now a rogue, supermassive black hole with 500,000 times the mass of the sun, zooming through the empty darkness between galaxies. Oh, no, that's it. You're on your own now. Drifting through the void. There's not much to eat, except for the stuff you brought with you. The only stuff out here is dark matter, and it's basically like a mime show, and you can't even see the mime show. You're starving. There's no food, no lights, no one to talk to but yourself, and the mime, that you can't see or hear. But you notice something. Billions of years have gone by since you were flung out, you think. You've lost weight. Ozempic? Can't be. Not out here in this economy. Wait, 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 that's right. You're dying again. That hawking radiation you used to ignore because no one told you about it? Yeah, you're evaporating. One tiny particle at a time. It's slow, but it's as certain as taxes and a second death. You sigh and smile. That's it. A peaceful ending where you will fall asleep and finally be able to rest. Oh no, not quite. You will see the rest of the universe thriving and having fun for trillions of years while you slowly waste away.